I always thought I must have been a deer or a horse in some former state, because it was such a joy to run. Louisa May Alcott, Sketch of Childhood, by herself. Welcome to Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. I call you friend, though you lived long before me. It's your words, your wisdom shine through. For all of you who are endlessly fascinated with the life and works of Louisa May Alcott, this is your podcast. Here we gather as scholars, teachers, students, and fans to learn from each other, talk with each other, and celebrate our passion for the Alcotts. We'll read from Louisa's works, share the latest news, discuss her work and life with fascinating guests, and even hear from the old girl herself. Your voice will be very important for this podcast. Later on in the program, I will share with you how you can participate. And now, on with the show. Welcome to this third episode of Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. While we may not yet feel the chill in the air here in New England, September is just around the corner and with it, Orchard House's annual benefit, the 5K Run and Walk, featuring three-time Boston Marathon winner, two-time Olympian, and Louisa enthusiast, Uta Pipping. Today, I will talk with Jan Turnquist, Executive Director at Orchard House, all about this run and walk now in its 11th year. This particular year features some exciting guests and a special presentation along with the run and walk. I'll also share a reading from Little Women that fits nicely with the episode's theme, catch you up on the latest news, and at the end of the podcast, we'll hear from Louisa herself. For this episode, I'm going to read from Little Women, Chapter 34, Friend. And I'm also going to include the scripture passage that I put in my book, Louisa May Alcott, Illuminated by the Message. And the title I gave it was, Start Running and Never Quit. But when nothing remained of all her three months' work except a heap of ashes and the money in her lap, Jo looked sober as she sat on the floor wondering what she ought to do about her wages. I think I haven't done much harm yet and may keep this to pay for my time, she said after a long meditation, adding impatiently, I almost wish I hadn't any conscience. It's so inconvenient. If I didn't care about doing right and didn't feel uncomfortable when doing wrong, I should get on capitally. I can't help wishing sometimes that mother and father hadn't been so dreadfully particular about such things. And from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, we read, Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. And now, let's catch up on the latest Alcott news. Continuing this fall is the special Alcott exhibit in Walpole, New Hampshire, run by the Historical Society. The Alcotts lived in Walpole between 1855 and 1857. Among the items on display are posters advertising the plays Louisa and Anna took part in and the piano loaned to the family by Dr. Henry Bellows, a Unitarian minister, which is immortalized in Little Women's chapter, Beth Finds the Palace Beautiful. 
I recently found Bronson's journal entry about this episode. It's dated Monday, September 17, 1855. You may recall that Lizzie had been stricken with scarlet fever during the summer in July. He writes, Dr. Bellows lends his piano this morning for Elizabeth to use during the absence of himself and his family in New York. This is a kindness to E and all of us, and will make our house here in the lane the more melodious till May next. Elizabeth plays quite sweetly. Abby's touch is bold. It is fortunate for the recluse, these gifts of theirs. There's more information in the show notes, and actually on the blog post I have a picture of that entry in which Bronson pasted a drawing of a girl playing the piano. The Wayside, next door to Orchard House in Concord and part of the Minuteman National Park, continues to be open to the public from now through October 30th on Saturdays, Mondays, and Fridays from 9.30 to 5.30 and Sundays, 11.30 to 5.30. The Wayside, known as Hillside when the Alcotts live there, is where part one of Little Women took place. You can imagine scenes such as the girls acting out Pilgrim's Progress on the stairs. The Wayside also housed Nathaniel Hawthorne and his family for several years and Margaret Sidney, author of the Five Little Peppers series. It's a fascinating tour. I recently did a blog post with pictures. The link is on the show notes. I recently visited Minuteman National Park's North Bridge Visitor Center, where I had the pleasure of going through Margaret Lothrop's research for her book, The Wayside Home of Authors. She has transcribed several years' worth of Bronson's journals covering the hillside period and beyond, passages that are not featured in Odell Shepard's book. Shepard left out most of the family-related passages. Thanks to Lothrop, these passages are now easily accessible, providing a window into Alcott family life, and in particular, Bronson's creativity, which I think influenced May in her art. The museum technician, Stephen Nevin, is very helpful and friendly, a joy to work with. The organization of the materials is clear and easy to follow. You can find a link to the summary of what is available in the show notes. Speaking of libraries, Walden Woods also has fascinating archives to explore. Their librarian, Jeff Kramer, is also very accommodating. He recently scanned and sent me an article on Junius Alcott, Bronson's younger brother. You can find a link in the show notes for a summary of their holdings. If you have an event you'd like to share with me on this podcast, simply send me feedback using the SpeakPipe app. It will record your voice and send your message via email to me. It's a quick, easy, and free way to send your feedback. Just click on the SpeakPipe app on the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion Facebook page. You can also click on the green Start Recording link in the show notes. I welcome all kinds of feedback. Ask questions, make comments, quote a passage, tell a joke anything Alcott-related. I look forward to hearing from you. And now, we'll hear from Jan Turnquist, Executive Director of Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House, about the annual 5K run and walk to benefit Orchard House. Jan shares some wonderful stories about this event and exciting news about a special presentation associated with the run. On the show notes, you'll see a video that Orchard House put out to publicize the event. You can sign up for the run and find out more at louisamayalcott.org. The link will be in the show notes. If you run the race, send me your pictures at louisamayalcottismypassion at gmail.com, and I'll post them on the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion Facebook page. Now let's hear from Jan Turnquist. I am speaking with Jan Turnquist. She is the executive director of Orchard House. You, of course, have heard her on the podcast as Louisa May Alcott. And Jan, uh, I understand that you have an annual event taking place in September at Orchard House. It's a major fundraiser and a lot of fun, too. And I was wondering if you could tell us something about it. Yes, indeed. Well, it actually takes place at the Alcott School which is very near Louise May Alcott's Orchard House. It's at Laurel Street um, in Concord, very, very close to the Orchard House. And on our website, all the details of how to find that location and how to register and everything are there. That's www.louisamayalcott.org. But the race itself was inspired by the fact that Louisa May Alcott loved to run. And that is a particularly astonishing fact when you know that uh, 19th century women were absolutely not supposed to do physical activity. That was considered dangerous. Their 
frail bodies wouldn't stand up to things like running. And running wasn't a sport then anyway for men or women. But Louise had just really loved to do it. At one point she said, I, I must have been a deer or a horse in some former state because it's such a joy to run. Famously too, at least famously amongst people who know a lot about Louisa May Alcott, there was a time when she was planning to take the train into Boston. There was a party she wanted to go to that evening and she missed the train. So she walked in and that was 20 miles from Concord to Boston. It took her five hours which means she was going at a pretty good clip. And she went to a party that evening and said, not bad for a vegetable production. <laughs> so she was really amazing as a, as a physical being. She loved physical activity. She certainly puts that into Little Women, as you can tell from the persona of Joe March. And so that was the inspiration. 11 years ago, we decided to do this walk run and the running part of course really is in honor of louisa but so is the walk because of that trip into boston that i just talked about some people really do love to run we've in fact expanded we now not only have a 5k but a 10k oh wow. great so you can choose to do either one or you can be a walker and the walk is 5k and we're very excited that uda pipig the renowned marathoner Olympian fitness motivator. She is the only woman woman to have won the Boston Marathon, Marathon three times. Wow. Now, now I, I assume that she's a Louisa May Alcott fan. Yes, she is. Uta's slogan is that she's the running girl because she grew up in East Germany under uh, a lot of oppression. She had no freedom really as a, as a young person but running was her freedom. And ultimately she did defect, but then she later, when Germany unified, was the winner of the great reunification race that they had. Oh. Uh, so all is forgiven, so to speak, but she, uh, she is really inspiring talking about such things. And she has been our honorary chair from the very beginning. Wow. And she will be there in person on September 11th. And then she is the coach for Dick and Rick Hoyt and Team Hoyt. Yes. I don't know if, if the folks would know about the Hoyt team. But Why don't you tell us a little something about them? Yeah, the father, Dick Hoyt, realized that his paraplegic son felt joyful when moving fast. So Dick began to train and would push his son in five and 10K races. Ultimately, he also began to do marathons. I will never forget the first time I became aware of them because I didn't know anything about this team. I was at a triathlon in Maine. My son was in it. I think this was in 2004. Mm -hmm. And as I stood along this big long stretch of sandy beach that the swimmers would come in out of the water and have to run down the beach and I always thought it's hard running in sand and here they've done this big swim and they have to run to the transition area and change into their biking clothes and then they bike and then they change again and run and I was standing there waiting for the swimmers to come out when I noticed a raft and there was an older man trying to lift a full-grown man off the raft and I thought something was terribly wrong I thought this was a medical emergency where was the ambulance why was no one helping this gentleman it was really upsetting for a moment until I saw that this man got the older the, the, the son off the raft and started to run and he ran right next to where I was standing I could have touched them and running on sand with this full-grown man in his arms, I was blown away. It, instantly, I, I realized this was intentional. This was no emergency. Yeah. This, was, this was being done as part of the whole experience for this pair. And that, I will never, ever forget the feeling I had. It was, it was really powerful. Wow. And I've always sort of followed them and admired them. 
Now, Dick is quite a bit older now. He was not a young man when he started all of this, but now he's a little old to do the long races, like marathons. He right. has, he's done the Ironman Marathon in Hawaii, which is a grueling yeah. triathlon. Um, but he now, he'll still do 5K and maybe sometimes a 10K. He, Dick and Rick, will be paired and running in our 5K. Wow. So we are tremendously honored that they That is an honor. But he also has a younger man named Brian Lyons, who is completely dedicated and now has taken over when they do a lo- when there's a longer race, oh. like the next Ironman in Hawaii that they're training for, which will be in 2017. Yeah. So it's it's an astonishing story, and we are so thrilled. Not only will we have this race September 11th at 11 a.m., but the next day, September 12th, we will have a speaking event where Uta Pippik and this gentleman I just talked about, Brian Lyons, Mm -hmm. will talk about the joy that they have felt in running and in movement. Um, I think it will truly be one of the most inspiring evenings um, that that you could really imagine. Uh, We're thrilled about it. We're calling it Freedom Through Movement living your life with passion. Oh, that sounds awesome. I I really think it will be because I have heard Brian speak. And when I told Brian about the first time I was aware of the Hoyts, the story I just told you, Mm -hmm. and I I told Brian how much I admired what he was doing, because I'm not going to go into detail here, but it's it's honestly incredible what this man is doing. And and he works full time. I mean, this is something he's doing on the side. Mm -hmm. You understand it. And it's still awesome that a father would do this for his son, but Brian, (laughs) Brian isn't related to him at all, but he does it out of this love and passion. And when I told him my little story that I just related, he said, Jan, do you know why I still do this, why I do this all the time? I still feel that way that you just described every time I'm with him. Oh, wow. So I'm I'm just thrilled. I think it all is, is very congruent with... Louise May Alcott's passion as well. She oh, was, I know. Think of the story she would have crafted out of this. She absolutely would. She was so strong-hearted. She used that term, mm-hmm. strong-hearted and strong-minded and strong of body. She was truly a trailblazer. Yes. And Uta Pippig as well. Yes, yes. That's awesome. So now how can um, how can the rest of us get involved? Well, there are two ways you can do it, and all of it through our website, louisamayalcott.org. Uh, you can register for the race. There's a link that takes you right to active.com, which is how you'd resist, register for the walk or the run. Mm-hmm. And then there will also be a link on our website if you wanted to come to the um, Thursday, I mean, I'm sorry, the Monday, September 12th event. Okay. At the, and that's being held at the Thoreau Club mm-hmm. in West Concord. Oh, okay. They partnered with us because they, of course, are, are very interested in fitness. They were excited about what we were doing, and uh, they have a lovely facility there. So they have partnered with us on having that September 12th evening. And that takes place at 7 p.m. Okay. Monday, September 12th. And the race, as I say, is Sunday, September 11th at 11. <laughs> and that's at the, and, and it's at the school, the... Um, Alcott Elementary School on Laurel Street. Laurel Street, okay. In Concord, L-A-U-R-E-L, Laurel. Well, that is very exciting. That sounds wonderful, and I hope that you have a wonderful turnout that day. Well, we have been thrilled. We've had as many as 500 runners. Wonderful. So we're expecting a great turnout, and I think a lot of people will be so excited to see Uta Pippig and the Hoyts, Mm -hmm. and uh, this whole team Hoyt often comes and runs it as well, because Uta is their coach. Oh, interesting. so there's a great connection there, and you just think of all these connections, Uta, the Hoyts, and then Uta and Louisa May Alcott. That's right. And Louisa's activity, it just, it all comes together beautifully. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for telling us about all this. And, um, again, if you want to register or if you want to find out more, visit louisamayalcott.org, and you can find out all the information there. Jan, thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. 
And now, a word from the old girl herself. Louisa May Alcott steps out of the past to speak with us. I wrote some very tender things as well. Have some of you walked around Walden Pond in Concord? Was it before 1862? <laughs> well, then, then you didn't get to meet our friend Henry Faro. Oh, such a dear friend to our family. He was like a son to my father, like a much older brother to me and to my sister. And we used to love to walk around Walden with him. He knew where the very best berries could be found, even when other people thought, oh, they're all picked over. He knew. He could identify any animal track. He could make bird calls so perfectly that the birds would answer. And I remember one time walking along with Henry, looking up to him. He was 15 years older than I am. And I, I just thought he knew everything. And he was looking down so tenderly at a leaf. And I rushed over to see what it was. It must be a very interesting animal track, I thought. No animal track. Nothing. A little bit of spider's web on, on the leaf. And I guess he saw the look of disappointment on my face because he got this sort of twinkle. You know how someone would look at you when you were younger and they were about to tease? And you could tell they were about to tease. You didn't know what it was, but you could see from that look, that's how he looked at me. What do you see here, Louisa, he asked. I see a cobweb on a leaf. Still with that twinkle, he said. Now can't you just picture the little fairies washing out their fairy linen? <laughs> well, that started my imagination going about fairies and elves and imps. Well, I hope you enjoyed this third episode of Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. I wish again to thank Jan Turnquist for her participation. Now I am looking for yours. Visit louisamayalcottismypassion.com. Right on the homepage is a link to the Speak Pipe app where you can leave audio feedback. Just click on the green Start Recording button. Speak Pipe app is also available on the Louisa May Alcott is My Passion Facebook page. In the left-hand column under Apps, just click on the icon and leave your message. You can also send an email to louisamayalcottismypassion at gmail.com. I will share feedback on the next episode. Remember to tell everyone you know about this podcast. Share on social media and by word of mouth. We need reviews on iTunes, so please, after the podcast, go to iTunes and take a moment to post your review. It will make the podcast easier for others to find. Subscribing on iTunes also helps, and it means you won't miss a single episode. Encourage your friends to subscribe, too. It's an easy way to catch up on past episodes as well. I look forward to seeing you next time on Louisa May Alcott is My Passion, the podcast. Don't forget to visit louisamayalcottismypassion.com for upcoming blog posts. In the meantime, remember what Louisa used to say, I want to do something splendid, something heroic or wonderful that won't be forgotten after I'm dead. Go out today and do something splendid. Until next time, this is your host, Susan Bailey, bidding you a fond adieu.